Welcome to another episode of Beyond Baseball Shorts, powered by Prospects Live. As always, I'm your host, Jared Perkins, and I have a very special guest here today, uh, Jonathan Sprinkle, right-handed pitcher with the Houston Astros. Uh, Jonathan, how are you doing today? Doing really well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, excited to have you on and kind of dive into your journey. I know you got to play in the Arizona Fall League this year um, and had some really cool experiences that way. And your, your journey kind of coming from be, uh, being an undrafted free agent and then making your way to the pros is awesome. But uh, just for the viewers who don't know you, um, just go ahead and give a little bit of background about who you are and kind of what some of the things you'd like to do outside of the game as well. Yeah, um, I'm from uh, – picked up in 20 in the weird COVID draft. Uh, I went to a D2 in Central Missouri for three years. It was really, really awesome. We had a really good team. A lot of, a lot of talented guys there. Got, got drafted out of there as well. Um, got into, got into the Pro Bowl at the Astros. Uh, first season was 2021. You know, a lot, a lot of fun. A lot of cool experiences there. You know, just working your way up the ladder, meeting guys, learning new things, learning how an organization likes to do things. Um, where your, where your strength. Is how to improve just kind of getting that game plan from an organization is really cool and then um you know moving up in the up in the system like you definitely like start to see lo- uh, different talent levels and different things in the game that you have to work on specifically that maybe you got away with at the last level mm-hmm. or previously at and um just paying attention to little like to little things like that and also continuing to make sure you do your work every day like that's kind of where you know, separating yourself comes into play. Um, I would say that uh, the Arizona Fall League was a lot of fun. Like, like, like that was definitely a good time. Uh, that's an unfortunately, that's where I figured out that I was, you know, injured and had to stop mm-hmm. all that and was with all that. But um, I mean, it was a great group of guys. The I mean, the, I mean, the Sags won the whole thing. Like, it was really cool uh scott schreiber one of my buddies walked it off in the championship and it was it was a really cool experience and i'm very very happy for all those guys as well so that was a lot yeah that's awesome and you talked about uh dealing with the injury i mean this is something that we've talked a little bit on prospects live before and i've wrote a few articles kind of people trying to overcome injuries um take us into a little bit of finding out you you got injured and kind of what your experience was like with that and how you've kind of decided to take that journey to power through and kind of come overcome that adversity as well. Yeah. Uh, so after spring training about a month into the season, I really didn't uh, kind of feel too well in my, sh- in my shoulder. Like I didn't really, it didn't really feel the same. I didn't really feel as whippy as I usually am, but I kind of just chalked it up to soreness, whatever, and kind of kept moving along and throwing with it, but I never really felt a hundred percent right. And um, then when it got like worse over at the end, towards the end of the season, and then, then when we got into the Arizona Fall League, like my arm started swelling up, like it started getting a little purple, and they were like, "All right, we need to, you know, check what's in it." So they found a couple blood clots because of I had thoracic outlet syndrome, which was you know your top rib, you know, kind of cutting yeah. off with your collarbone. And uh, so once they figured out it was that, you know, I went and had my upper rib removed. Um, had all the clots removed, which is awesome. And I'm, I mean, I, I feel really well. I feel like, and I feel like I have my old arm back, to be honest. Um, I'm ahead of schedule. I'm probably going to start throwing here in the next couple of weeks. So um, I should be right on pace for spring training and just kind of a good little reset this off season to get the body right. So I'm excited. Yeah. That's but, awesome. Yeah. I mean, when you go through those kind of setbacks and injuries, it can sometimes feel like a lot just kind of piling on at once. I, I talked to one guy who, uh, John Creel, who pitched was pitches with the Mariners and he talked about how when he got injured at NC state, the coolest thing that they did was they brought him into a room with other athletes who were going through injuries as well, just so they could have that group of people to kind of feed off of each other, um, which is kind of a cool thing in concept to do. Um, Kind of as you power through the the off season in twenty twenty three, what what are some of your goals going into next season besides, of course, probably getting healthy? But um, what are some of the things you're looking forward to as you enter spring training and kind of get ready to kick off twenty twenty three? Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to getting back and just kind of being myself. I just feel like I wasn't my for a long time of last season. I kind of felt like a lot of things got away from me. Just kind of re grabbing the basics and you know having my command back, having my you know sharp off, sharp off speeds back kind of getting all of that, you know, put back together and just continuing what I did in 21. So 
I mean, I feel like I got a really good uh, supportive group and the Astros have been awesome about everything. Um, they've been really cool about, you know, giving me time to rehab it and understand that I'm still like, I like I'm also doing all their strength training stuff. So like, there's like, like it's a bit of a give and take trust kind of thing, which is awesome. And uh, they've been, they've been great the whole way, but yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to 23. Um, just being able to put everything back together and just go out and have fun and just be yourself. I think that's all, that's literally all it is. Yeah, that's awesome. And it a little bit, kind of getting back to going through your command. Do you have a favorite pitch in your arsenal that you like to go to? <laughs> Yeah, um, I would probably say my sliders, but my 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 definitely uh, go to pitch. It's uh, it's something that you can throw for a strike, and then also it's the same as a put away pitch. So it's it's nice to be able to have the difference. Yeah, I, one thing that you touched on that I really liked is you talked about kind of just going out there and having fun and enjoying what you do. Um, talk a little bit about because something we focus on um, on the Beyond Baseball podcast is really players trying to find their identity outside of the game because a lot of times growing up only knows baseball and every single day they're just taught baseball, 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 and it's kind of hard to find who you are outside of the game. Um, so thinking about that and as you try to find ways to have fun while playing baseball, what are some of the things you do kind of to find passions away from the game or really kind of develop yourself um, outside of the game as well? Oh, absolutely. A lot of us golf, golf. We had like groups in spring training that was kind of like a PGA group. And we all went out and shot against. <laughs> I mean, stuff like that's really fun to understand, like who people are outside of the field. So it's kind of like that, uh, kind of like. Uh, ah, sorry, <laughs> you said that, but um, yeah, uh, that music's also another good one. A lot of a couple of the guys, I know Luke Barry Hill is. He takes outside of baseball um finding those little hobbies and little passions can honestly save your career because a lot of guys if they get too honed in like and you start over analyzing everything you're just doing, doing nothing but hurting yourself in the long run and we're all human beings at the end of the day so there's no, you know baseball doesn't define who we are like we're all you know just guys outside of baseball like we're just another guy on the street so um having those friendships and those hobbies outside of the game is uh, in my opinion, a necessity, especially in the minor leagues to where it's guys are constantly moving up and down and there's kind of movement everywhere. It's not like you really have you know, constant teammates throughout the season. So it's just kind of like knowing that everyone has that support throughout, throughout the system is honestly really cool. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. I love how you touched on kind of that you all are human beings outside of the game and kind of there's more to you than, playing baseball and your performances on the field. And that's when I started writing and doing an analysis and things like that. The one thing I just kept missing it, everybody talked about the statistics and the numbers and all the underlying data, but no one was talking about like, what are some of the human elements that could really be affecting their development? Cause you think about player development and the increases of mental performance coaches and things like that, that, that piece is just constantly not really thought about. I um, mean, it's nice to see more and more teams bring in mental performance coaches, really kind of focus on this human element that really plays a role in the game. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. Um, and it, the, the one thing I uh, um, asked about, too, is uh, do you have a favorite golf course? I assume that your spring training is in Florida, right? So is there any <laughs> golf courses out there that you like to go to? Uh, oh, yeah, no, for sure. We had a couple in Corpus as well during the year that, that like, me, Cody Deason, Steve, uh, like a lot of us went uh, golfing there too. Jimmy, he was, uh, yeah, I think we've. I think I probably played way more in Corpus than I did in West Palm. Uh, but I mean, West Palm was definitely more expensive than Corpus. <laughs> so uh, no, but they, the, West Palm definitely had the nicer course, though, for sure. Yeah. Uh, before I dive into the last couple of questions, so I have to ask because I'm a big music fan as well. What's the go-to genre or go-to concerts that you have to hit up? I really want to go to a Luke Combs concert. I haven't mm. been. I really need to go to one of those. I've been. I've been itching, but most of the time we're in season. And it just doesn't line up. I'm gonna probably have to go to Nebraska at some point to try and hit him up before the season. But I don't even know if he's gonna be there. But whatever. Yeah, one of the best shows I saw, I saw Ray Fulcher play. I don't know if you know who he is. He wrote a lot of the songs with Luke Combs, too. Yeah, dude's incredible. Oh, he's a phenomenal writer. He's really good. Yeah. 
Um, so kind of going to the last couple questions. Uh, the one I have to ask before I kind of get into the last big question is what's the favorite restaurant when you go back home during the off season? Oh, uh, that's a good one. Um, get back. Probably the original Q39 in downtown KC. That one is, that's a really good one. Like that one, yeah, that's some of the best barbecue. I would 100%. I don't, yeah. I'm a Royals yeah. fan, so the one thing I got to do is get to Kansas City just to get in on the barbecue. I'm different up here. I'm telling you. It's yeah. different. Uh, the last question I have is because we focus on their identity piece and a lot of what you touched on too and finding yourself out of the game. I, I do think the guys who are kind of going through some of the, the, the same journey that you've gone through, whether it's becoming an undrafted free agent, coming out of high school, just making that transition to pros, but also trying to grow as a person uh, while they're playing the game that they love. What would be your one piece of advice? Um, love the game with everything you have, but again, understand that it's not what it's not what defines you. It's not defined your success and the way you're doing it with everything in life. And um, you know, if you get an opportunity, take full advantage of every opportunity. Like opportunities come by very, very little, and you have to seize those moments. So, I mean, go at it with one hundred and ten percent, but. At the same time, like, this is extremely hard. Like, this is something that, like, not a lot of people get to do. So you have to be grateful, but also understand that, like, somebody's coming up right behind you. Like, you need to keep going. You have to keep getting better at everything. Nobody's ever mastered this game. Nobody's ever been, you know, there's very few that can be in the conversation of the best. So, you know, you're either going to, you know, get outworked or you're, you know, or you're not. So, which yeah. one? I mean, that's kind of the way I think it. I think about it. Like, it's just, you know, got to keep going. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I think it's awesome thing we'll end on talking about gratitude and kind of focusing your perspective. Uh, Jonathan, can't thank you enough for joining us uh, for the Bound Baseball Shorts. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we're wishing you nothing but the best as you go into the 2023 season. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me.